The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. From time to time, in their 30s and early 40s, most men and women ask themselves... What will I be doing when I'm 65 years old? What are my chances of being 100% self-supporting when it's time to stop work? Well, that's largely up to you and the decision you make right now. One such opportunity for an important decision will be offered to you in our middle commercial. It tells about the Equitable Society's Independent 60s plan. This plan means exactly what it says. Financial independence for you in your 60s. Do you like that idea? Then please listen carefully to this important message from the Equitable Society coming in about 14 minutes. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, hijacking. It's titled, The Return of Father Crime. Recent investigations have given the public a new conception of organized crime. Today, you know, as well as do your law enforcement officers, that top men in the underworld have infiltrated into respectable social circles. They may live in excellent neighborhoods, send their children to exclusive schools. They themselves often belong to the good clubs and bend elbows amiably with respectable citizens at the 19th hole. These men run crime as a big business and frequently make fat profits through the unsuspecting people they consort with socially. Your FBI has long known this menace and you can rest assured is doing everything in its power to uproot it. Tonight's dramatization from the official FBI files is a case in point. Tonight's file opens in a large Midwestern city a man sits in the steam room at a fashionable club. He looks up as he hears the door open. Frank, you in here? Yeah, Al. Thought you were coming in the office today. I got tied up on that auto radio deal. We finally got our price. Yeah, good. Uh, nothing to clean up before you leave, is there? No. I'll only be gone a few days anyway. You flying? Driving. I'm stopping at the Springs on my way back for some golf. Oh, that's a great course. If you don't slice. <laughs> so I hear. Thought I might hit Chicago, too. Look at some of that freezer equipment. You still like that idea, don't you? Yeah. It'll open up a new field for us. More frozen foods being stolen every day. Why don't you meet me Tuesday in Chicago? You can look the stuff over. No, Tuesday's no good. They have an open house at Ted's fraternity. I promised to bring him and that red-headed roommate of his back to town for a little fun. Oh. Hey, somebody told me Ox Martin is getting out. Oh? When? This week, I think. <laughs> Seems like he's been away forever. Well, it has to be 25 years. Yeah, this will be a brand new world for him. No more guns, no more muscle. Shall we get in touch with him? What for? Well, we were partners. Al... That was a long time ago. Well, let's get dressed. We can have lunch before you leave. George? Mm-hmm? What are you doing home? Uh, I'm tired. Oh, you're tired. Well, isn't that too bad? Would you like to get into bed and have me bring your dinner? Can a guy get tired? If he can afford it. How much did you make today? Four and a half. Four and a half dollars? Yeah. The kid next door steals more off newsstands. What were you breaking into, uh, hot rods? Elsie, 
Elsie, these days, everybody's locking their cars. Oh, you poor boy, isn't that tough? Maybe you ought to stick a card in the windshield with your name and address on it. Then people could mail their loot to you, and you wouldn't even have to get out of bed. Oh, lay off. It's going to be a sweet job explaining you to my uncle. Yeah? What uncle? Ox Martin. He's getting out Monday. He'll be meeting you. I want to know what you're doing. Yeah, why do I have to make character with him? Because he just might give you a job. Well, what makes you so sure he'll get back into action? Honey, Ox Martin is the toughest man this town's ever known. And the biggest. Yeah, but 25 years a long time. He's still got connections. Frank Boyd and Hal Shelby used to be his partners. They were all in the hijacking business together. If he wants, he can move back in with them. Yeah, but they ain't hijacking anymore. They've got plenty of other touches. And what if they don't want Ox? If Ox wants them, he'll move in. Later that evening at a local arena, the Police Athletic League is holding a series of benefit bouts. Seated near the ring are FBI Special Agent Taylor and Police Detective Mort Ross. Jim, look at that kid punch. Yeah. He's got a great right hand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, he's using those big gloves. That other boy must be so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. It's a real good fight. Yeah. Where do you see the middleweights? One of them's the kid I arrested last year for snatching purses. Oh? The woman refused to prosecute, and I got the boy to come down to our gym. If he doesn't turn pro, he wants to be on the force. You know, Mort, the league sure does a great job fighting delinquency. Yeah. It's too bad they didn't have one when Ox Martin was a kid. Who's Ox Martin? He started piling up a record before I joined the force. Ox Martin. Well, I don't think I've ever heard of him, Mort. Yeah, he's just finishing a 25-year stretch. Gets out Monday. What was he in for? Murder. He was a tough cookie, and he had brains to go with the muscle. Oh? He originated quite a few techniques. Like what? First hijacker ever to use detour signs to run the trucks into ambush. First to use a state trooper's uniform to stop a but truck. But didn't invent a way to stay out of jail. No, that's one they all miss. All right, come on, Shorty. All right, Jim, let's see if we can root this kid in. Oh, come on, boy. Uh, just a minute. Is this the Lane apartment? That's right. Is Elsie Lane in? Who are you? I'm her uncle. Ox Martin? Yeah. Oh, well, Cheek, uh, here, come right in. Come right in. Thanks, thanks. Yes. Hey, hey, Elsie. Yeah? Uh, your uncle, Mr. Martin, is here. Oh, swell. Uh, she'll be right with you. Here, let me have your coat and hat, Mr. Martin. You just make yourself comfortable. Uncle Ox. Hello, Elsie. Gee, I, I don't know what to say, except... Well, it's, it's just wonderful seeing you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ain't it, though, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah same here. <laughs> I guess she's uh, changed some, huh, Mr. Martin? She ain't a kid no more, uh, huh? Well, she's a very attractive young woman. Well, thanks. Uh, George, how about digging Uncle Ox a drink, huh? No, 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 don't bother. Bother? Why, it'll be a pleasure to toast your being home. I don't touch the stuff. Well, when I was a kid, they told me you were a two-quarter day man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's before I went away, honey. I haven't had a drink in 25 years. Say, do you mind if I sit down? No, sit right here. Thanks, thanks a lot. I'm a little tired after my trip. That feels good. Uh, you got any plans, Uncle Ox? Yeah, plans? Plans about what? What you gonna do? Oh, I got a couple of ideas. You gonna work alone? No, I don't think so. I may hook up with some outfit. Shelby and Boyd are still around. Frank Boyd and Hal Shelby? Yeah. They're big men these days. That's so. Doing what? They got a lot of touches. Yeah, that'd be a good spot for you to move into, Mr. Martin. No, <clears throat> I didn't have anything like that in mind. Yeah, but you just said you wanted to hook up with somebody. I had something a lot different planned. Yeah, like what? Working with flowers. Oh, you mean muslin flowers? <laughs> oh, no, no, son, just tending to flowers. What are you talking about? I was head gardener at the prison for over 15 years. I learned a lot about flowers. I'd like to get a job in that line. You mean be a gardener? 
A legit gardener? That's right. <laughs> huh? What's the joke? <laughs> Ask Elsie. Shut up! <laughs> Elsie, what's so funny? I'll tell you later. Right now, I'm going out for a walk. What, do you remember telling me about Ox Martin? Oh, sure, Jim. Well, according to the records, he was once arrested with two men named Frank Boyd and Hal Shelby. Yeah, they used to work together. What do you know about Boyd and Shelby now? Enough. Why? Well, the office just got word from Washington that they might be mixed up in handling the loot from a dock holder back east. I'll give you a list of their warehouses. Oh, wait a minute. I haven't got enough evidence to get a search warrant. Have you ever worked on them? Yeah, I arrested them for selling stolen property five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. They were convicted, but got short terms. They're tough to call it, Jim. You see, they've got three or four legitimate businesses to hide behind. Really legitimate? As far as we can find out. Uh, what was stolen back east? Whiskey. We've got the serial numbers that are on the crates. Can I have a list of them? Yeah, I think I've got an extra one. Here, on me. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. Thanks. Uh, now, come on back to the file room. I'll get you everything we've got on Boyd and Shelby. Hello. Hello. Oh, where are you? Downtown. Oh, honey, you should be home here entertaining your uncle. You know, he's a big man, biggest man in town. All right, joke over. Where is he now? In the bedroom, sleeping. Well, see that he doesn't leave the house. Why? What for? We're going to use him. Yeah, for what? I got a deal figured out. I'll tell you about it when I get home. Yeah. Somebody here to see him. Who is it? Her name is Lane. Says she's Ox Martin's niece. Oh, all right. Send her in. Yes, sir. Hello there. Hello. Come right in. Thanks. Well, I understand Ox Martin's your uncle. That's right. I'm Elsie Lane. Well, sit down, Miss Lane. Thanks. <clears throat> Ox, uh, get out, did he? Yes. I heard the other day he was getting sprung. You seen him? Yes. How is he? He doesn't look a day older, Mr. Boyd. Oh, that's fine. And he's real anxious to get back into action. Oh? That's why Ox sent me here. Well, I guess we could find something for him to do. He's not interested in the job, Mr. Boyd. But you just said... You were his partner once, weren't you? You and Mr. Shelby. Yeah, that's right. That's how he wants it to be again. <laughs> Look, Miss Lane, that partnership was 25 years ago. As far as Ox goes, it still stands. He told me to tell you that, too. Then suppose you tell him something right back. Tell him to get a lawyer and sue us. He means business, Mr. Boyd. So do I, young lady. Now, if you don't mind, I've got some work to do. You, Elsie? Yeah. Hey, where have you been all day? Trying to work an angle. Where's Ox? Oh, he's in the bedroom. He got up once, wanted to go out. Said he had to get some medicine, so I told him to go back to bed and phone the drugstore. Had it sent over. Is he sick? No, it's something he takes all the time. Hey, uh, what's this angle you were working? Well, I went to see Frank Boyd. Told him Ox was feeling great and looking for action. Yeah, what was the idea? I said that Ox sent me there to tell him he wanted to be a partner again. Oh. You go for it? No. You're lucky. And how could you sell that wreck in there as a guy who was feeling great and ready for action? We keep him here. I'd be the go, but... Hey, wait a minute. I just thought of something. Hey, what? I just thought what Ox would do if he was in shape and Boyd turned him down. He'd move in on those guys, make it so hot they'd have to take him in. Yeah, but Elsie, he ain't in shape. That doesn't matter. Ox's specialty was hijacking. We'll use that against Boyd and Shelby. Well, what do you mean? We'll find out when they're sending a truck out, and it could be hijacked with the same tricks Ox used. Uh-huh. Then I'll write them a letter, admitting the hijacking and sign Ox's name. Hey, that ain't bad. Who'll you get to hijack the truck? You. <laughs> We will 
return in just a minute to tonight's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. But now, listen. Ah, I guess that's the mailman, Helen. Our check from the Equitable Society comes today. Every month, right on the dot, those Equitable checks come to members who have paid up their Equitable Independent 60s plans. They're checks that mean financial independence for life after you're 65 years old. And here's Mr. Duncan Cameron, who started one of those plans 26 years ago. You finished your payments last year, didn't you, Mr. Cameron? That's right, Mr. Keating. 1950 is the year I stopped working and started to enjoy life. In other words, Mr. Cameron, you're now enjoying the three freedoms that go with an independent 60s plan. First, freedom from money worries and job worries. Financial independence. My children will never have to worry about me, Mr. Keating. I'll be doing fine as long as I live. And completely on my own, too. Second, with an equitable independent 60s plan, you're free to live anywhere you please. Wife and I have moved back to the town we were born in. We'd rather live there than any place else on earth. Third, freedom to do the things you've always wanted to do. I bagged some mighty fine-tasting quail last hunting season. <laughs> I think of a better shot than ever. You know, Mr. Keating, the turning point in my life was the day my equitable society representative showed me... You don't have to be in the high-income brackets to afford an independent 60s plan. That's a fact. You don't have to earn big money to begin an equitable independent 60s plan. Ask your equitable representative to explain why you probably have a big head start towards independent 60s because of your social security and the life insurance you already own. Often only a small amount of additional insurance is all that's required. A few dollars a week did it for me. Friends, why not profit by Mr. Cameron's experience? Phone your Equitable Society representative without delay. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Return of Father Crime. War brings to a people more than casualty lists. It also carries in its wake a wave of crime. That fact has just been proved again by a crime survey taken by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The study covered the period since last June when the Korean War began. It shows a pronounced upswing in many types of crime. Mr. J. Edgar Hoover, director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, in commenting on these figures said, and I quote, these increases reflect a criminal trend which, if unchecked, will greatly impair the security of the nation's home front. An increased public awareness of the seriousness of this menace is absolutely essential if America is to remain strong and free. Tonight's file continues at the FBI field office as Detective Mort Ross approaches Agent Taylor's desk. Jim, I've got some word on Boyd and Shelby. Oh, what's that? I heard a rumor they were trying to unload a shipment of whiskey. Hey, any proof? Not yet. You dug anything? Yeah, I think maybe Boyd and Shelby are back in business with Ox Martin. This just came in. What? Well, the state policeman reported stopping a car on Highway 10 for speeding. As he was writing out the ticket, the driver mentioned seeing another trooper just up the road stopping a big truck. Uh-huh. Well, nobody was patrolling that other part of the highway. So this policeman drove up there and found a motorcycle painted like a state trooper's. That's Martin's technique. Uh, any leads off the motorcycle? No, it was stolen last week here in the city, and we've got no description of the truck. How'd the trooper happen to call you? Well, the man who got the ticket remembered seeing an ICC license plate on the back of the truck. Oh. Well, good luck. Well, we're not on a case yet. Oh, why not? Well, until we get some definite proof of theft from an interstate shipment, we've got no jurisdiction. You have, though, Mort. So why don't you try and locate Ox Martin? Hi, Frank. Oh, hello, Al. How was the trip? Well, the golf was awful. The business was great. Wish I could say the same. What's the matter? Well, we've been having a little trouble. Wednesday morning, a dame shows up at the office. Said she was related to Ox Martin. Mm-hmm. She said she had a message from Ox. He wanted to move in for one-third of our action. Oh, <laughs> that's great. It didn't turn out so funny, Hal. One of our trucks was hijacked last night. We lost a couple of hundred cases of whiskey. What? 
This morning, this letter arrived. To Frank Boyd and Hal Shelby. As I write this, I'm sitting in front of 200 cases of very choice whiskey. That should give you an idea about what happened to your truck. I'll knock off a lot more of them unless you boys change your mind and declare me in. Signed, your old pal Ox. Well, what do we do? Well, let's wait for him to contact us personally. Who's that? Me. Oh, I thought it was Ox. Ox? Where is he? Well, out for a walk, I guess. You let him go well, out? That's nothing to do with it. I went out for a newspaper. When I came back, he was gone. Oh, that's great. Suppose he runs into Boyd or Shelby. Well, how would they know him? Look, he probably just wanted some air and went around the block. That well, still isn't good. Have you been to the garage? Well, not since last night. I thought you were going to go over this morning and check the whiskey. Oh, well, I, I slept kind of late. Get over there now. Well, what about us? I'll wait here till he comes back. I'll meet you over there. Say, Frank, are you sending out those electric blankets tonight? Yeah, I plan to. I think we ought to put two extra men on the truck. That's a good idea. Mr. Martin to see you. What? Ox Martin? Yes, sir. Tell him to come in. You wearing a gun, Al? Yeah. Come in. Well, hello there, fellas. Well, don't you know me, boys? Ox Martin. We know you. You, you fellas haven't changed too much. You might have put a little around the middle there, maybe lost a little on the top. I uh, hear you boys are doing fine. What's on your mind, Ox? Mm, oh, nothing, nothing. I just heard where your office was and thought I'd walk over and see you. Of course, if you're busy, something like that... Quit stalling, Ox. Get to the point. I don't know what you're talking about. That letter you sent us. Letter? What letter? Don't give me that. I didn't send you any letter. I suppose you didn't knock off one of our trucks, too. Look here, boys. Honestly, I don't know what you're talking about. This letter's hijacking. Did you send your niece to see us? Elsie? Yeah, Elsie Lane. Well, I'm living over to her place, but I didn't send her here. They've been kind of nice to me. They took me in, let me stay there till I find a job. You see, I was head gardener in prison, and I'm going to look for something in that line outside. Frank, I think he's leveling with us. Yeah, well, what about the hijacking? I got an idea he's being used for a front. Ox, where is this place that your niece lives? Right down there in Thompson Street. Suppose we drive you home. Bart, the Bureau is in on the hijacking. Officially? Yeah, the truck was found abandoned, and the state police discovered part of a broken whiskey crate inside it. Was there a serial number on the crate? Yeah, and it was one of the numbers on that list that I gave you. That sounds like Martin is working against Boyd and Shelby, not with him. Yeah, I know. Have you examined the truck? Yeah, the license plates were stolen down south. How about uh, chassis and motor numbers? Well, those are filed off. Lab's trying to restore them now. Oh, have uh, you gotten any lead on Martin? Not a thing, Jim. But if he pulled that job, he must have had plenty of help. No, why do you say that? I uh, got this report from the prison today. Says he spent more time in the prison hospital the past few years than he did in his cell. And uh, look at these new pictures of him. Hmm. Looks like a sick old man. Boy, he sure does. If he was in the hospital that much, he could still be needing medical attention. I've already thought of that, Jim. I checked her local doctors in the hospital, and he hasn't been near any of them. Hmm. Did you talk to the prison about his state of health? No. Let's get them on the phone. They could give us a lead. George! Yeah, I'm back here. Ox come home? No. I thought you were going to wait for him. I left a note for him, telling him to come here. Well, what'd you do that for? This will be a better place for him to stay. We can put a bed in the garage office, and if he wanders out, nobody in this neighborhood will know him. Well, what are we going to do with the whiskey? 
I got a lead this morning on a customer. He wants to give us $20 a case. What? Oh, buttermilk is worth more than that. Do you want to dig up a buyer? No. Okay, then. Okay. Just let me... We're back here, Ox. Oh, fine, fine. I got your note, so I came right over. Good. I brought some friends with me. Who? You remember me, Miss Lane, Frank Boyd. Oh, yeah. It's my partner, Hal Shelby. There's the whiskey, Frank. Yeah, I see it. Ox, why'd you bring him here? They wanted to meet you. Oh, look, we're busy now. We're waiting, Miss Lane, till our truck arrives. Truck? For what? To take our whiskey back. What do you mean, your whiskey? It belongs to us. Well, I'm glad to hear ah. you admit it, Boyd. What? Stand right where you are, all of you. I'm a special agent of the FBI. You're all under arrest. <laughs> Frank Boyd, Hal Shelby, George Lane, and his wife, Elsie, were convicted in federal court on a charge of violating the federal theft from interstate shipment statute. Each received a sentence of five years. Ox Martin was released following the proof of his innocence, supplied the court by your FBI. The phone call made by Special Agent Taylor to the prison hospital where Ox Martin had been a patient was put through in order to learn whether Martin had been supplied with any prescriptions. Upon learning that he had, Agent Taylor and Detective Ross checked drug stores until they found the one which had filled the order for Ox's headache pills. The store supplied them with the address to which the medicine had been delivered. As they approached George and Elsie Lane's place, they saw Ox Martin come out with Boyd and Shelby, get into a car and drive off. It was then a simple matter to follow them to the garage. And so your FBI, in cooperation with the local police force, closed another case. Closed it and removed four more criminals from circulation. Remove them so that at least for a while, they will no longer be a danger to you, the American people. Now one final question on the cost of the Equitable Society's Independent 60s plan. Mr. Keating, I still find it hard to believe that a plan like this doesn't run into big money. Well, you already have Social Security, don't you? That's so. You already own some life insurance, don't you? Yes, I do. Then you now have a big head start towards an independent 60s plan. A comparatively small amount of additional life insurance may be all that's required. Get the exact figure from your Equitable Society representative or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, homicide. Its title, The Mountain Murders. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacy Harris. Others in the cast were Walter Catlett, Georgia Ellis, J.C. Flippen, Henry Morgan, Paul Richards, and Carlton Young. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Mountain Murders on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.